I'm Rebecca Lewington. Welcome to our podcast. NVMe, Non-Volatile Memory Express, defines how computers talk to solid-state drives, SSDs. It's a fundamental part of modern computing systems from laptops to supercomputers. So the recent release of version 2.0 must be a big deal. But why? My guest, Walt Hubis, represents Micron on the committee that determines what makes it into each version of NVMe. So he's the ideal person to help me dive into the new features of NVMe 2.0 and the standards process itself. So Walt, thanks very much for joining me. Hi, Rebecca. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. So Great. first, tell us a bit about yourself. What's your background well, and what's your current role at Micron? Sure. I've been involved with uh, computer storage systems since the early days of RAID, way, way back when. I'm dating myself. And uh, uh, I have some of the original patents, in fact, on RAID implementations uh, that went on to become big, you know, big storage systems. More recently, I've been involved with a bunch of things related to NVMe, uh, security, and, and those sorts of things. So currently, uh, I'm the NVMe representative for uh, Micron Corporation in the NVMe workgroup, as well as in the Trusted Computing workgroup. I'm, uh, I'm the secondary you know, member there, but my background is both storage uh, interfaces as well as security. Oh, you might be actually overqualified for this job. Um, well, <laughs> first, <laughs> so first, what is NVMe for? Also, oh, so what happened with uh, with the advent? You know, early on there was a lot of rotating media, and so you had disk drives, and those were connected by in the early days by an interface called SASE, and then it went to SCSI, and then it became. Uh, and then there was also SATA. So all of these interfaces basically pushed the data through a wire from the drive to the computer, and it was just a common way for all of these drives to talk to the computer systems. Well, what happened with the advent of non-volatile memory, and in particular NAND flash, um, there's so much greater speed there that being able to transfer the data at the full rate that the NAND could provide it became a really limiting factor for many of these interfaces. Um, there's in NVMe currently, you know, you can get three gigabits a second and and upwards right now. Some of the some of the data throughputs is truly astonishing. So it really enables you to take advantage of the inherent speed uh, of the install, a solid state memory. Right. So NVMe was created to clear a bottleneck, basically. Exactly. So today, what proportion of SSDs use NVMe rather than one of the older alphabet soup standards? Yeah, so um, some of those are still, you know, uh, some of those earlier systems are still very popular on legacy systems. Uh, but what's happened recently is that the, the, when NVMe devices came out, there needed to be a bridge, right? So what they did was many NVMe devices that you might find in your computers or stuff are based on a SATA interface. But, you know, SATA interfaces are, are fairly limited. They do three to six gigabits per second, um, you know, and they're just not, not, not all that fast. So what's happened now is um, you've got NVMe devices that can transfer data directly into memory via PCIe bus. So they're much, much faster, many, many times faster uh, than is currently possible with SATA devices. Okay, so it's, it's more than just that, there are, that, that NVMe is popular. Um, right. There's things that you can do with NVMe that are just impossible with NVMe. Right. I mean, you can, you, with an NVMe device, typically you go directly into memory. Right. Right. Got it. So, NVMe, NVMe is so great. Why do we need this new version? Oh, well, so what's happened is in the early days of NVMe, it was seen as a very simple, very low latency interface. Uh, and that was the initial thought of it. Well, as it began to gain traction, a lot of those people that were over in the SCSI field, for example, T10, INSITS T10 is the standards group that did SCSI. A lot of those folks, you know, had built in a lot of things for enterprise class systems, uh, uh, you know, multiple controllers. So you can have multiple computers talking to the same device, or you might have um, various like reservation systems so that, you know, one computer could get control of the device while the other one had to wait. All of those kind of features that you have in enterprise class systems are now moving into NVMe. Everybody discovered, hey, this NVMe stuff is super fast and it dumps stuff right into my memory. Um, let's just go there. And so all the guys that were in Insets and T10 in those standards organizations are now in NVM Express. And so they're bringing all that functionality into play. 
plus the kind of things that we're doing. It used to be just, you know, you'd sit on a PCI bus inside of a computer and that was your interface. Well, now you have NVMe over fiber, for, over, you know, fabrics, for example. So now you may have lots of drives on a fabric that uh, allow multiple computers to access all of that data. So um, a lot of changes are moving towards the enterprise. I was going to say, there's a sense of NVMe growing up to include all, yep. these, all these enterprise features that were previously exactly. in other, other standards. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit more about fabrics. What do you mean by fabric? Well, so there's a variety of mechanisms. One of the most common ones, for example, is Ethernet. Um, everybody's familiar with that. You get, you know, one gigabit, 10 gigabit and upwards for, for certain other classes. Well, there's been a move within... Um, within NVMe and within, within the industry in general to be able to provide uh, disk drives that connect via Ethernet. Now, that's a great example uh, because, you know, now you have a computer that's going out on an Ethernet network to get to some kind of storage. In order to do that, it's got to be able to identify the device. It's got to make sure that the device is the correct one uh, and that um, the data can be transferred securely. So there's a lot of work going on there uh, to uh, allow these devices, whatever the fabric happens to be, it could be Ethernet, it could be a variety of different uh, interface technologies. But the idea is that it's not something that's necessarily close to the computer. Right. So it's almost like abstracting NVMe. So it's not just over PC, PCIe physical Exa connection exactly. over Ethernet or presumably right. other, other things as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Which bits of NVMe 2.0 did Micron have the most input to? Well, we were we touched a lot of different things, but um, because all of this stuff was important to us, we were certainly watching it all carefully. Uh, some of the bigger ones, I believe, were uh, things like um, um, uh, CNS is a great example. Zone namespace. Uh, if you're if you're familiar with disk drives, you know you've heard of shingled writes, where you no. overlap. <laughs> no, <laughs> but the idea is you write consecutive sectors or consecutive data blocks, right? And that's basically what ZNS does. Um, ZNS was very good for that because what it does is allows you to uh, write the data in a way that's very, very good for the NAND. So you really take ah. yet another step of advantage in terms of performance and endurance with the NAND. So that's just one example. We also did things like, uh, we're also involved with things like endurance groups. Uh, endurance groups allow you to take different kinds of memory. Some memory, you know, there's like, for example, single layer, uh, 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 topologies, SLC, uh, TLC, all of these different technologies. But what it does is it allows you to uh, take advantage of the characteristics of that storage media. Right, and SLC, QLC, et cetera, is the number of bits per cell uh, in the The NAND. number of bits per cell, right. right, right. And, the, and generally speaking, the fewer bits per cell, the higher speed, but the lower capacity, but the higher endurance. So uh, ex exactly. There's, there's a whole bunch of trade-offs when you get into NAND. One of the, early, one of the earliest things was, uh, you know, really NAND uh, at heart, especially early on when we were first coming out with some of that. NAND is a tough, uh, is a tough media to make uh, into an enterprise class uh, storage medium. You know, you really want the, the, the integrity of the data is foremost. And achieving that and ensuring that uh, has just been an astonishing accomplishment as we move into, you know, triple level and quad level, four levels per cell. I mean, it's pretty, pretty amazing at the physics level there. And that always amazes me. Right, absolutely. And yeah. it makes sense that Micron, who you know, we make the world's most technologically advanced NAND, that we would want yes. the NVMe standard to take advantage uh, Absolutely, there is in the devices. Absolutely, and I think the, I think you're going to see Micron playing a bigger and bigger role as the technologies increase and as we have to do things that number one make it easier to use those technologies, and number two increase the the reliability and um, the persistence of that data, so that you can have that data around for a long, long time. Right, right. Now switching gears a bit, um, there's mm -hmm. another protocol called Compute Express Link or CXL, uh, making a lot of no noise yeah. in, the, in, the, in the industry recently. How does CXL and NVMe fit together? So I think I mentioned a little bit earlier to you that the way that NVMe works is it actually puts data directly into a memory system, right? And so basically it's a PCIe bus that, uh, that allows us to access memory. And the NVMe um, interface actually DMAs data directly into that memory. So what CXL is about is if you take something like um, fabrics, right? You take a, um, a 
take your pick, any kind of thing where you have, where you have memory that's not necessarily directly attached to the computer, but it's sitting out there. And, and that could be, for example, a drive, right? The drive very likely has memory in it, or it's talking to memory on the host. Well, one of the things that happens when you, when you start to now add memory layers, if you will, it's called caching, right? So you have various levels of caching going across the system. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that as you have, so you might have a small amount of very, very fast uh, memory, and then you get all the way out, say, for example, to an NVMe drive, where you have uh, huge amounts that's relatively slow compared to the fast RAM that you have, right? So the idea is you want that data to be the same all the way through. And that's called coherency. So that when something changes out at the outer point, you want that data to be reflected back up into the high speed caches. So what CXL is really all about is it rides on top of PCIe. It uses PCIe to establish itself. And then once it's there, it provides data coherency. So it's an adjunct. So it really extends the capability of NVMe and PCIe for that matter. Yeah. And they yeah. both sit on top of PCIe. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. But like I said, CXL deals more with the memory buffers, uh, right. whereas uh, the NVMe interface takes care of write the data, read the data, erase the data, that kind of thing. Excellent. So I should think of them as complementary, not as not as confusing. exactly complementary. Right. So let's let's go back to the standards <clears throat> process itself. Mm -hmm. um, clearly. Computing is a team sport. <laughs> we can't do these things right. on our own. Um, and I, presumably that's why we have standards bodies like NVMe to make mm -hmm. us all work together. Can you say something about that? Well, certainly. I mean, being in a standards organization has tremendous benefits, not only for um, the manufacturers, because now they can all manufacture something that will go into the market so that everybody doesn't have to do something special with your product. It just opens up the markets for all of the products that all of these different vendors would like to make. Great example, this is with NVMe. Uh, we recently, in the, in the most recent 2.0 spec that we referred to, um, actually there's now a section in there for rotating media. So actually disk drives will now have NVMe, it's true, NVMe interfaces on them. So, um, so what it's doing is it's just opening up the market for all of these different approaches uh, to that. The flip side of the coin is from the from our customer's viewpoint, from the users of this, it's really, really nice because now they can have multiple sources for their drives, multiple sources for their storage systems, and not have to worry about one of those suppliers going out of business or something like that, right? It's, it's just having multiple sources. It just solves that whole problem. And then finally, you know, I mean, the technology is being pushed forward all the time by this. Um, you know, we, there's a continuity here of understanding of how storage works. I mentioned T10 becoming, you know, all the T10 folks moving into NVMe. Um, it, so there's this, this line of expertise that's shared among all of the organizations that are part of that standards organization, which are manufacturers, users, test people, all kind of stuff. That's a really interesting perspective. So it's a combination of maintaining the tribal knowledge, giving the supply chain flexibility, this sort of almost Lego-like ability to build computers, and also the mechanism by which the latest and greatest new stuff becomes mainstream. Exactly. Right. So tell me a bit about the other standards bodies that Micron participates in. <laughs> I know one of your well, if we, if we have an hour, we can go through it all. Um, I guess I would say pretty much the big one is uh, the two big ones really are PCI SIG, and that's the specification. That's where you get uh, the PCIe specification uh, for the bus level products. Uh, we're looking at PCI 5 now and PCI 6 as well as now on the horizon. The other thing is JEDEC. JEDEC is um, uh, pretty much where all of the different form factors that we might go into, we go into everything from uh, M.2, which are the, the smaller ones, to really big cards that have many terabytes of data on them, and uh, even automotive uh, functions, for example. So we're, we're very, very active, and in fact, leaders in those as well. And JDEC also defines basic memory specs, right? Like uh, that, between GDDR and LPDDR and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Yep. Right, right. That's more of the memory side of it as opposed to the NAND flash side, which Micron is both very, very uh, heavily invested in. So, and an element, in the field. 
Right. So another one, of your, another one of your role is that of ringmaster, shall we say, keeping all these things pulling in the right direction. Well, that's right. And uh, it's trying to coordinate them across all of the different business units, as well as all of the different standards organizations. And uh, we, you know, we get together on a pretty regular basis, uh, like almost weekly, to be able to coordinate our activities across the different standards organizations so that we kind of tend to keep them in sync. So, that, you know, so that they, they don't drift too far away. And, and other corporations do that as well. Right, got it. So just to finish off, um, what's next for you, Walt? Well, so there's a lot of interesting things going on right now. As we move forward, um, we have a, uh, we're trying to improve uh, how quickly we can write to the, me the NAN media and also to ensure the longevity of that NAN media. Um, that's one of the things that uh, we've been working on so that there's something called write endurance that we're really looking at hard to be able to, how do we send data to the device in such a way that the, 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 you take full advantage of what that NAND is capable of. Um, there's also a tremendous amount of security work going on right now as well that we're involved with, both within NVMe and also within the Trusted Computing Group. Um, as all of these new technologies come into place, uh, coordination between, for example, a security group like Trusted Computing and NVMe is becoming extremely important. Those two need to be in lockstep. So we're involved with both of those. So, so that's really the big thing right now is how do we improve and take advantage of what NAND can give us. And at the same time, how do we make it more secure? Right. That's a really great note to end, at the end this conversation on. Walt, thank you very much for joining me. This has been very interesting and very illuminating. And I wish you the best with the ringmastering. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.